What's up YouTube peeps and barbecue freaks. Thank you guys for joining me today. In today's video, I'm gonna do something that I've never ever done in my life. I'm gonna make some ribs in the crock pot. If you're someone who maybe lives in an apartment and doesn't have a pit, or you're not a smoker, but you would like to make some really good ribs, I'm gonna do a little experiment since I've never done this before and see if we can make some really good ribs in the crock pot. Now, again, I've never done this before, so this could be a huge success or it could be a major fail. <laughs> I have no clue, but I'm gonna bring you guys along. We're gonna try it out. I have a rack of spare ribs that I'm going to use and uh, this is gonna be interesting. So again, it's the first time I've ever done it. Uh, so I have no idea how it's gonna come out. Fingers crossed, it's a success. Let's get started. All right, so what I have here is a rack of uh, St. Louis ribs are already pre-trimmed. This is a, you can see that 3.28 pound rack that I'm just gonna take it out of this cry rack. And I'm probably not gonna do any trimming whatsoever. I'll take a look at it once I get it open, but I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna have to do much to this. Get a better look at it. Pick tiles here. Wipe this right down. Make sure we get rid of that. So this is what we have here. It's not a bad rack. It actually looks pretty good. So, I don't think, um, you know, I'm probably going to trim off <clears throat> some of this fat up here. But, I know I shouldn't be cutting towards me without my glove on, but uh, it is what it is. And actually, this isn't even the knife I should use for this part here, but... Since it's just a little bit, I ain't gonna dirty another knife. What the hell? What the heck? That's it. That's all I'm gonna do to this rack. I'm not even gonna remove the membrane. I'm not gonna remove this flap. And the reason I'm leaving the membrane on is since I've never done ribs in the crock pot, I have no idea how tender they're gonna get. My guess is they're gonna be, you know, really, really tender, like fall off the bone tender. So I'm gonna leave this membrane on so it has something that to help kind of keep these ribs together in case that I'm correct in my thinking that uh, that they're just going to be extremely tender. So I'm going to leave it on. What I am going to do is actually just cut this rack in half. And I'm just going to guesstimate. I should just do it this way. Probably about right here. That way they fit in the crock pot. Again, membrane is still on. I did not remove this flap. You know what? I'm going to take off some of this <clears throat> fat right here. You can remove some of the fat so you don't eat it. Bite into it. It's not going to be anything good. That's it. That's all we're going to do to this rack here. That part and that part make the whole rack. So now we're going to get them seasoned up. All right, so the rubs that I'm going to use for these ribs are the Harry Sue rubs. I'm going to use this all purpose rub in combination with his chicken rub. You guys, this combination right here, excellent, excellent, excellent on the ribs. Um, last weekend I made some ribs for customers. I use this combination here and uh man they were their mind was blown it was so good so and i've used it you know just around the house and i really really dig it so not using a bind or anything i'm just gonna season these ribs up this is the chicken rub and then i'm gonna come back with the all-purpose rub You 
you guys should really try this combination of rubs. Cut that in, flip it over, do the top side, and then we're going to get them in the crock pot. All right, I got the ribs rubbed down. We're going to let it sweat in for just a bit, about 10 minutes, and then we're going to get them in the crock pot. All right, you guys, these ribs have started to sweat in. You can see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and drop them in here. I'm actually going to try to put them up against the edge of the walls. Let's see if that'll hold up. You can lay them down if you want, I reckon but that heat is gonna come from the walls inward. So I want the meat kind of on the outside to, you know, take that heat to make sure that they're nice and tender, which I have no doubt they're gonna be. So for the sauce, um, at this point, you can add whatever sauce you like. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna do something a little different. I was going to use the uh, apple habanero from Head Country, but I ended up grabbing the hot and spicy. I grabbed the wrong one. However, I'm still gonna use some of this. So uh, I'm gonna add some of that, but I do have a little bit of apple habanero left over that I'm gonna add. And I'm just gonna kind of experiment here. I've got a little bit of uh, hickory and brown sugar from Sweet Baby Ray's. So I'm gonna add a combination of all three. Um, you know, this is a good way, to, one, to get rid of any, you know, if you have a bottle that has just a little bit of sauce in it left, it's a good way to get rid of that. So. That's what we're going to do here. This is an apple habanero. Again, use whatever you like. Going to add some of this sweet baby rays. Get that all over the top. That should add some sweetness. And the hot and spice will add a little bit of heat. And then next I'm going to come back in with this uh, hot and spicy. Add that. And I'm adding about enough to equal one bottle, which is, let's see, this is a 20 ounce bottle. So I've added, I don't know if you can make it out, but it's about right here. So I've added about half of the bottle. And then again, I added, you know, probably enough to make another half bottle with the other two sauces. And this is it. I'm gonna set this, if you wanna, you know, cook it for about four or five hours, put it on high. I'm leaving this on in the crock pot, heading to work. So I'm gonna do it uh, on low and let it go for about eight or nine hours. It'll be about nine hours by the time I, I make it back home. And that is it, that's all you need to add to it. We're gonna get the lid on, get the crock pot turned on to low and let it go. That's it. I will check back uh, on these ribs in about nine hours when I get back from work and we'll see how much liquid, you saw all, the only liquid I put in there was the sauce. We'll see how much you know fat renders out and how much liquid is created in that um, in this pot after it's been simmering all day. So that's it. Let's put it on low and let's go. All right, you guys, I am home. These ribs have been going for right at nine hours. I'm about to open it up, take a look, and see what they look like. Again, I've never done this, so I have no clue if this is gonna be a fail or a success, but we're gonna find out. Let's get this lid off. Oh, a lot of pullback. As you can see, ribs kind of falling, you still see. Man, it's got a lot of liquid in here. You guys saw I only added about 20 ounces of barbecue sauce, but this crock pot is, uh, ooh, it's hot. Is probably about halfway full of liquid, so that's all that fat that has rendered out. Uh, let's see, oh. Yeah, these are really tender. I think that one's about to crack if I pick it up. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Uh, okay, <laughs> this is why I left the membrane on because I knew this was gonna happen, or I had an idea this was gonna happen. So, okay, uh, let me see. Yeah, you can. I think you can make this out here. Like this is what, this bone right, right here is already popping out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this off. So I just turn it off. And I'm gonna pull these out and we're not done with them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sauce them up and put them in the oven 
to let that sauce kind of caramelize. Um, but first, <laughs> I got to get these out. So let me get these out. Let me get this crock pot removed. And then um, we'll get on to the next step. Again, I'm going to sauce them. And I'm probably going to turn one of these halves into a dry rib, which means you can still sauce it. But at the end, you just cover it up with rub to make it look dry. And the other one, I'm probably just going to just sauce by itself. I'll figure it out. Let me get these out and I'll pick back up. All right, you guys, so I got the ribs out. I got them on a tray. And uh, I'm just going to take some of my barbecue sauce. This is the Head Country Hot and Spicy. Again, you use whatever barbecue sauce you like. This is just happens to this just happens to be one that I really really like, and uh, that I have on hand. So we're gonna use it. Um, what I've done is when I when I pull these ribs out, I turn my oven on. I got it set at three hundred and fifty degrees, and we're gonna let that warm up. These ribs sauced up. They look really nice already. You wouldn't even tell they were done in a car, or you couldn't tell they were done in a crock pot just by this here. But uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this, throw it in the oven, let that sauce kind of caramelize a little bit, just like I would, you know, if I was taking them out of a out of a pit, I would sauce them and put them back on the pit to let them set. But one of these, I am going to add some more of the rub that I use on these. So I think on this one, I'm going to hit it with, this is the Harry Sue's chicken rub, the competition chicken rub from Harry Sue's. And then I'm going to come back and hit it with a little more all-purpose rub from Harry Sue. This one I am not going to do that to. So I'm gonna let this sit for just a minute. The oven is still coming up to temp. I'm gonna take this entire tray, throw it in the oven. Um, you know, since I've never done this before, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take. I have it set at um, 350 degrees. So I'm gonna, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Put them in there, let them go 10, 15 minutes, and then uh, take a look at them then. I did not sauce the bottom because again, these ribs were, they had kind of fallen and had been sitting in that juice. So the bottom is already moist or wet. So I did not sauce the bottom, but uh, once, probably about five more minutes, the oven should be up to temp. We're gonna get these ribs in, let them go 10, 15 minutes, pull them out, get to tasting them. And uh, we're gonna see how they turn out. All right, you guys, these ribs are done. These are the ones that are the dry rub. Um, and these are the wet ribs. Uh, again, cooked everything exactly the same. The only difference is I added an extra coating of that dry rub on top of this before going in the oven. These were in the oven at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. So, I'll tell you what, these stains are tender. So we're gonna cut into these. I'm gonna cut these up and uh, maybe plate some up and then we'll give them a taste test. Oh yeah, these things are tender. I'm just interested to see how they taste. Yeah, these are almost fall off the bone, which is kind of expected when you, you know, cook them in a the crock pot. That's perfect if you're, you know, just kind of eating at home, which is what we're doing with these. So I don't mind that at all. Actually, I'm going to leave that together. I'm going to bring this rack up here, and we're going to cut into some of these. If anything, they're going to be really tender ribs, and they're going to taste really good because that rub is a great, that rub combination is a great rub combination. So, let me get the rest of these cut up, and then we'll plate some up. All right, you guys, I got one rib of each. Let's take a look at this. And so you're not gonna have a smoke ring, obviously, because they were done in a crock pot. But as you can tell, these ribs are still really moist. So at least that one is, let's just take a look at this one. This one might be a little drier. This one's a little, it's not, this one is not as moist as 
this one, but my guess is that these ribs that I saw actually came from the top part of the rib, uh, top part of the rack that was much thicker, where these came from the bottom rack, so they're a lot thinner, not as much fat as the top part of the rack, but I don't know, they still look good. No, that looks good, nice and moist. Only thing to do is give this a uh, taste test and see what they taste like. So let's do that. All right, you guys, we're gonna give these ribs a taste. I'm actually gonna go with the dry rub rib first and see how that turns out. So I got a nice bark, smells good. You know, of course, no smoke ring because they were done in a crock pot, but they're extremely tender. Let's see what they taste like. Oh, look how tender that is. Oh, wow. Mm. Honestly, that's a really good rib. It is a little drier, again, because this, this part of the rack or this rib came from that, the bottom part of the rack that isn't as thick and doesn't have as much uh, fat in it. But let me tell you, the flavor, freaking phenomenal. Those two rubs, along with the sauce, work great. I can tell that these weren't cooked on a pit, but you know, I'm, I'm you know, used to smoked meats. If anybody was coming over or if you were making these at the house, serving them to guests, they would absolutely love them. So we're gonna try. This is the one with the sauce. Of course, it's thicker, more moisture. Uh, that's the sauce here. Let's give it a shot. Mm. Mm. Uh oh, I'm gonna pick that up, man. It's still really moist in there. You guys, I'm gonna tell you, man, that's still really, I mean, it's tender, moist. This is a good rib, both of these ribs. Listen, I have never in my life done ribs in a crock pot. I was really skeptical about doing this recipe, doing this video. I had no idea how it would uh, turn out, but let me tell you something, these ribs are good. If you're someone who maybe lives in an apartment or doesn't have a smoker, but you want good ribs, listen, you can definitely get good ribs in a crock pot. I like the one, uh, the wet rib, because it had a little more moisture, or when it comes to moisture, um, but I'm really digging the flavor of the dry, the dry rub better. That rib, to me, you know, when you coat it with an extra coating of uh, rub on the outside, it's just, you just kind of amplify those flavors. They're both really good. Um, I'm going to guess most people, most average people would not be able to tell the difference whether you did these on a smoker or <laughs> inside in a crock pot. They're that good. Now, if you wanted to add some smoke, what you could do is either use liquid smoke as a binder on your ribs before you rub them, or add some to the crock pot when you um, you know when you put the barbecue sauce in and you put the ribs in. If you do those one of those two things, you could definitely add some more smoke flavor if you're looking for that. But listen, I'm I'm truly truly surprised at how good these ribs taste. They're really really good. So if you're wondering if you can make a really good rib in a crock pot, the answer is yes. I just proved it. I wouldn't mind doing this again, quite honestly. It, they're good ribs. So I hope you guys found this video useful, entertaining. I will see you guys next time. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you guys next time. Take care.